All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thanks, as always, for being here. Hey, if you have a minute to leave us a five-star rating and a written review, we will send you $1,000 in the mail. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Disclaimer, everything I've said up until this point in the podcast is not true. Do not hold me to it. we got a sponsor today. Uh-oh. You ready? Yeah. It's a big one. Yeah. Caffeine. Caffeine. Caffeine is not... <laughs> company they wrote in i'm like yeah you can sponsor us just send them send us some caffeine and you're just in in the pure in the purest form yeah so last week we were t- we talked about caffeine okay because of the oh, Harbon yeah. fizzy sticks and stuff and i'm planning to put up an instagram post later today or tomorrow to point out to people that the best time to take your pre-workout isn't right when you start your workout mm-hmm. caffeine takes 30 to 45 minutes to reach its peak maximum potency Mm -hmm. in your bloodstream and 50 percent of the caffeine that you intake is still in your bloodstream four to six hours after you drink it so not only do you have to time your caffeine Mm -hmm. that's in your pre-workout you know 30 to 45 minutes before you start your workout to get the best effect but you need to think about what time you're going to go to bed yeah too uh, or if you're going to have more caffeine later in the day when you take your pre-workout so if you're listening to this you work out like first thing in the morning get up a little bit earlier and get your caffeine in your system see if you notice a difference and if you work out in the afternoon you might not want to use a full serving mm. of caffeine because of a pre-workout or drink or drink your pre-workout with lunch right if it takes a, if, it, if you can take a little bit to get into your system because if you're going like a f- four five p six p.m workout uh-huh. which it's pretty common, yeah. you know, to work out in the afternoon and you're trying to go to bed at nine, 10, you're still feeling the effects of that caffeine, even if you don't realize it. And it's still having an effect on your sleep, even if you don't realize it. Why are you laughing? It makes me think about at the gym, I used to sell a lot of formula O2s, yeah. which were like 140 milligrams of caffeine. It was a heavy dose. It was a big can and people mm-hmm. were buying those all times of day, even, you know, cracking yeah. them after before or after classes and, you know, including those evening classes. Yeah. That's a heavy dose. We in have the evening. <laughs> I wrote a recent blog that's on our website about should you take two scoops of yeah. pre-workout at a time? And I talk a lot about your own individual sensitivity to caffeine in there and how much total caffeine you should be having across the course of the day. So if you've ever wondered, go check that out. But that's not what we're talking about right. today. That's just the sponsor. Today we have an interview with Paul Horn, the author of this book that I'm holding up for everybody that watches this on the YouTube's Radically Simple Strength. Paul is a starting strength coach, owned his own gym in uh, Los Angeles for a long time, now lives in Boise, and Woo-hoo. you could consider him a strength and conditioning expert. He's done this for a very long time, seen a lot of things. We talk about why he wrote this book, why the subtitle is a practical plan to help average guys build (laughs) awesome bodies, about the noise in the fitness space, about what really matters when it comes to building a physique, the importance of nutrition, the importance of doing hard things, a lot of mindset related stuff, really good interview. Disclaimer, there's some foul language in this episode. We don't typically have a lot of expletives flying around. So if you've got kids in the car, if you're listening to this car, (laughs) you might want to warn them. I mean, it's, it's no worse than what you get on cable TV. (laughs) They still have cable TV. (laughs) We don't, we don't have cable TV, but yes, great interview. You're going to like this a lot. Be sure to stay to the end to find out where you can buy this book and where you can follow Paul on social media too. So hope you guys enjoy. Okay, if you're an average guy, you are in luck. Paul Horn is the author of Radically Simple Strength, a practical plan to help average guys build awesome bodies. Welcome to the podcast, Paul. That was a great intro. Thanks for having (laughs) me, man. (laughs) I actually have a few book ideas rattling around in my head to write, and this was kind of... This was kind of one of the ideas I want to talk about that at the end, but this was like one of the the books that I really wanted to write. So I think you saved me a couple of years on writing this. (laughs) It is a very, it's a stupid thing to do business wise, you know, because you spend two and a half years just agonizing over this thing every day you sit down and it's just like hell. Yeah. And then you're done. And you put it out and you're like, yeah, it's like 20 bucks. (laughs) It's 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 a really a long-term play. It's a dumb way to make money. uh, (laughs) But that's not why I did it. You know, it's really like it, it forces you to clarify your thinking. And I had been coaching for 
you know, 20 years. And I was like, I need to figure out what I actually think about this. And, and there's no better way to do that than to have to write it down. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. that actually kind of brings me to the first question, like, you know, it, coach, coaching, as long as you have, you've experienced a lot of things, everything from, I mean, mindset related stuff to programming, to nutrition, to everything. Why did you decide to distill it down to this particular topic and, and kind of go after this niche? Well, I read a lot about the practice of writing and one of the pieces of advice that everybody seemed to say was you have to be, you have to talk to one person. You have to have like an avatar. So you know who you're speaking to. And, and this rings true for any business. You know, if you're, if you're trying to be for everybody, you're for nobody, you're just too generic. So I was like, all right, you know, we've got a pandemic my gym shut down. Now seems like a good time to, to try and write this book. And uh, who do I want to write it for? And I had worked, my gym in Los Angeles was in an area they call Silicon Beach. So you have Google, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, they're all like five minutes from my gym. And so I would get a lot of these young software developer guys. And I started, I got interested in coaching to work with older people because mm. I went to the starting strength seminar too. And one of the things that Ripito talks about is the, you know, how an older person who falls and breaks their hip dies within like 30 days or something like it, like over 60% of them. And I, and, you know, I had a mom, she was getting up there and I'm like, Oh, and if we just lift weights, then they're not gonna like, oh, this is great. Like I could do this. And so that was my goal initially with the gym was to help people over 50 but because of the location, I got these young tech bros <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and I ended up really liking working with them because they were, you know, they had all the pieces in place. They were smart. They had, they made a lot of money. They had nice cars, they, their life. They had checked all the boxes in their life. And then they're like, dude, I really want a girlfriend, <laughs> you know, like I, the missing I piece there's like, I'm everything else is great. I just like, I'd really like to have a girlfriend. And you know, the, the, a lot of them were very skinny or skinny fat, you know, and it was like this one. And because they had spent most of high school and college head down learning to code so that they can make a lot of money later, they never really, they weren't on the football team. Mm -hmm. And so this was really coming to my gym was the first exposure that they had to like a weight room. And I just, I just loved the journey with those guys because, yeah. you know, you, you, you take a kid like that and you train him for six months and he puts, he, you know, he, he gets up to like 185. and my favorite day ever, they would come into the gym six months, eight months later. And, and they'd be like, Hey coach, um, be cool if my girlfriend like comes by and just I'm always talking about the gym she wants to check it out it's like oh like <laughs> you're getting laid like <laughs> we, it worked <laughs> and um and I it just it was like I just love the, the I like working with them and and so when it came time to write the book I thought you know I'd like to talk to those guys if I I think I tell a story in the introduction where I was out at a bar just kind of looking it around and and I saw one of those guys and I thought God, I'd love if I could, I could make this kid's life better. And he has no idea that I can do this for him. And I just like, I wish I could just hand him something and say, just do this. Yeah. And, and just head to do this, ignore everything else. And I promise you, we can fix this part of your life. And, and so that was really the reason for writing the book. And then of course, as soon as I published it, I start getting all these emails from women. They're like, what the hell, man? <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, I'm like, all right, well, let me, you know, it's not the only book I'm going to write, but yeah, <laughs> you know, this one's for them. And then we'll do another one for you guys. Well, you know, Mike Matthews has bigger, leaner, stronger, and then he has the female version of it, which I think he calls thinner, leaner, stronger. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. So exactly. <laughs> You've just, yeah, I'm really, I'm upset that he took that bigger, leaner, stronger line because it's just, <laughs> it's perfect, you know, and I catch myself writing it all the time in marketing copy. And it's like, do you want to be bigger, leaner? No, I got to delete that. <laughs> you know? Another letter from Mike's lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So yeah, it sounds like you were at, you were actually at a crossroads in your gym where you were either going to have to you know cater to this clientele or open like or actually start like an app, um, a dating app for these guys to help them find women who are looking for rich skinny <laughs> fat guys. There, there's only so much I can help them with, you know, and <laughs> we can do the we can definitely get them in better shape. You know, and but it, it's funny because that's the other part. I hadn't really thought about this, but being having them also be in that gym environment with other guys who, you know, are you get a mix. You get the nerdy guys, you get the alpha males, you get the successful CEOs. And but so not only are they learning to lift weights and push themselves and do hard things, but they're also kind of getting a vibe from other guys. And it, mm -hmm. it ended up. We used to have this evening session, like, you know, Tuesday, Thursday nights, and it just turned into like a bunch of guys. It was like a locker room. And and I think <laughs> right. they learned a lot there too, you know? So yeah, it was learned uh, about life. I, yeah. And, and there's, there's something about when you like the way you look, all the other pieces kind of fall into place. Yeah. And we, we often think that that's a superficial goal, but it, it really matters. You know, you, you, when you're, it's like when you wash your car, you feel like it kind of drives better, you know, or when mm -hmm. you put on a nice suit, you just walk a little bit taller. Well, you know, if you make your body look, you look in the mirror and you go, huh, all right. You, you project yourself differently. So yeah, that's why also, it, was, it was important. It's also an outward reflection of you being dedicated to doing the things that it took to get like that. Like when you look around at people who, are, you know, grossly out of shape and obviously neglecting their health. It kind of shows you the lifestyle that they're leading and the level of discipline that they exercise in, in their life on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you take a guy from being out of shape, small, overweight, weak, all that kind of stuff, that's a hard journey to go through. And if you get to that point, other people recognize that I've tried before, Hey, that person like is willing to put in the work. Yeah, it is a, you know, being in good shape is an indicator of good health. Usually. You know, or I mean, if you're juiced up on steroids, yeah. <laughs> or but in the middle part, pharmaceuticals. yeah, you know, there's always the extremes don't aren't necessarily healthy. But if you're above, and that was the the line the line in my book, like I'm not trying to make anybody a bodybuilder. I don't want to coach competitive powerlifters anymore. There are better people to do that. I'm interested in taking a guy from like below average to above average. You know, yeah. I don't want the gym to be your entire life it's not that's you're gonna burn out you know or you're gonna be really awkward and antisocial because all you do is talk about the gym and when you're on a date no like she doesn't yeah. care about your deadlift <laughs> so right it, it, the gym and fitness and strength training should be a part of your life and and it should make the other things in your life better you know what i mean so yeah. that's that's really what we're trying to get out of this yeah. The intro to our podcast says that your fitness and nutrition should enhance your life, not take it over. I think yeah. And that was a big, that was a big shift, you know, because in the nineties, the gym was the activity, like going to the gym was like, it was this culture. And then CrossFit came out, starting strength came out, uh, P90X came out and it shifted the, the, you know, sort of the culture to, mm -hmm. It's actually not about going to the gym. It's about using your time in the gym to make the rest of your life better. Yeah, and that was a, a big, point. it was a big shift. And it, and it really like, people don't give P90X enough credit. Like they, like this was, Ripito pointed this out to me a long time ago, but they were the first fitness product on TV to spend millions of dollars spreading the message that like, fitness is like getting in shape is hard. You're going to sweat. It's going to burn. Your muscles are going to be confused or whatever, but, <laughs> but it's not the thigh master. You don't, it's not, you know, five minutes a day and it slides under your bed. It's like, yeah. this is, you got to work. And, and that, that helped change a lot of people's minds right at the same time CrossFit was coming out and saying, look, this is about functional fitness. You know, it's, so it was, it's been, it's, I was just writing an article about this, but the, you know, everything's cyclical. It's, and mm -hmm. fitness is no exception. So you have, you know, when I got into this, it was all bodybuilding. It was T Nation and, you know, Arnold's book. And, and it was just all about bodybuilding stuff. And then, and then 
CrossFit came out, starting strength came out, powerlifting went through this total, you know, re resurgence in popularity. And it became about like, Hey, I don't really care what I like. I care about what I can do. Mm -hmm. I care about my, my deadlift. You know, I care about how much I can squat. And now about, I don't know, five years ago, it started to shift back the other way where mm -hmm. people are now, and now you see, yeah, you know, machines aren't all that bad. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe there's, maybe there's a place for doing some ab work or, and and that's how this works. You you know, you swing one way and then the pendulum swings all the way the other way. And then it kind of meets in the middle, which is where we are now. You see a lot more people getting back into bodybuilding. Yep. Primarily because all the powerlifting people got fat and hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the high I, level crossfitters all look like bodybuilders too. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, speaking from experience, it was like, okay, like I'm, I can't bend over and tie my shoes without my face turning red. You know, I've, I've yeah. had three shoulder surgeries and I look like shit. So, like maybe we need to fix something. Something's got to give. It, yeah. And that, and that really was the inspiration for the book in, in some way, because I felt like there was a gap in the market in terms of a lot of my clients were saying we would sit down for a consultation when they came to the gym and they would be like, yeah, I want to get stronger, but I don't want to look like you. And, <laughs> and I thought initially, like, I thought initially they were thinking, or I was thinking, oh, you mean like, you know, just like too, too muscular, like mm -hmm. too, <laughs> like too jacked, too intimidating. And, and then I saw a photo of myself and it was like, oh no, I'm just fat. Like I, cause you know, you don't notice it. Like I, you're a, I don't know how big you've gotten in your career, but you, you don't, it creeps up on you. Yeah. And you realize. Especially during the, during the novice linear progression phase of the, the newbies strength gain. Yeah. Know, that, that's usually, and you talk about this a lot in the book, how, you know, that's a time to dedicate to getting stronger, but it's pretty easy to get fat during that stage. Well, yes. And you know, we, if there's one thing that I appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, more than anything about Ripito and starting strength, and I am a starting strength coach. They're the, re you know, they're the reason I was able to build a successful gym. Like I, I and they are, he is incredibly consistent with his message. Mm -hmm. He knows about diet. You know, he knows about fat loss. He's not, you know, he's been doing this for over 40 years, but he, his message is if you're a young man, you need to get bigger and stronger. And that's, he just hammers that home and he's right for a lot of people, but some guys take that too far, Yeah, you know, and, and that, and that, so that was the, the battle that I had in my gym, which again, pointed out that like, maybe there's a gap here because my clients would come in and I was pure starting strength. Like we're in the early days of the gym, like we're going to run the novice linear progression and you need to drink a gallon of milk and I don't care. And they would say, you know, I feel like I'm getting kind of fat. And I was like, I don't care. Your deadlift is, you know, <laughs> like I would ignore them. And that's a real good way to lose clients. Cause they'd be yeah. like, you know, I, you're ignoring me. So I'm going to quit. And now you're looking at the business and you're thinking, okay, maybe I should actually listen to what they're saying. <laughs> And, and, and they're right. You know, if they would, if, if I, it, you, you can get, you can take it too far. Not everybody yeah. needs a gallon of milk. Not everybody wants to be a competitive power lifter. And so you have to, you have to give, you have to balance the biz, like listen to what the client needs with what you think they should do and help them achieve their goal, right. In any successful business. And so it became Okay, maybe we're gonna back off me hammering them about how important it is that they can pull 500 pounds if they don't really care. And I'm hearing more and more people talk about wanting to lose, you know, lose some body fat. And like, let's, you know, let's let's do that. <clears throat> of course, I had to lead by example because I was <laughs> I was 252 and not wow. lean. Yeah, I mean, when I was competing in powerlifting, that was my and Rip wanted me to be 275. So. And so I would give them advice about fat loss and it would just be this glazed look on their face. Like, what the, okay. Like, why, why would I, am I going to listen to you about this? Like you're, you're fat. 
And uh, so I, I thought, I thought, and there's another little, so I don't know if you ever went on the starting strength forums, but oh, they yeah. used to be very, very active, right? And one yeah. of the things was the training logs. So people would leave, they would log all their workouts on this old V bulletin style form. And one of our coaches was a, st- a statistics professor. And he, as a fun exercise for his students, he had them go through and like log everybody's, all the coaches training logs, like pull all the data and analyze I remember it. this. And he, yeah. And he gave us this report mm-hmm. that just showed where all the coaches stacked up, you know, and it was fascinating. And I was like, all right, so where's my name in terms of strength? And it was just dead sent. Like I was the middle guy. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's because you didn't yeah. get to 275. Right. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Probably. That's what Riff would say. But you exactly. had, uh, you know, Feigenbaum and Jillian at the top, you know, and the, and and Reynolds. And then I'm, I'm, and so I thought, okay, I'm 252 and fat. I'm never going to be the strongest starting strength coach, you know, so I'm not going to be able to be like, I'm the, the strong guy. So what else could I do? And I thought, well, maybe I could lose all this body fat and I could see if, you know, I could carve out a little, maybe I could be the, the guy you go to if you want to get leaner. And I didn't know if I could do it, but I'm like, let me figure this out. <laughs> and I did. And so I cut down to 10% body fat and it took way longer than it should have, but I was fumbling around trying to figure it out. And then, and then oh, the client started compliment like oh what do you do you look great Mm -hmm. you know and and then I started getting those consultations where people were saying actually I do want to look like you and I thought okay so now we're now we're on to something here and so it started with anytime a client you know we'd put them on the novice progression for three or six months and the moment that they came in and said you know I feel like I'm getting a little fluffy we're cutting like (laughs) right I don't care about your squat anymore like let's cut and and they stayed longer and they were happier you know cuz they felt like a they were being listened to and then and then they felt like they not only got stronger but they looked like they lifted weights mm-hmm. and that was really the early in, inception of like the idea for the book is like nothing in starting strength talks about fat loss but that's not the point the point right. of the book is th- this is how you get stronger and there, and it's a perfect explanation of how to do that but then if you want to get leaner, well, then you go to Mike Matthews or you have to leave the starting strength world mm-hmm. to find that answer. And I thought, well, what if I could just, you know, I'll just, here's what I've been doing in my gym for the guys that want to transition to like a fat loss thing or or a more aesthetics focused approach to, it's a cringy word, but <laughs> to, right. to barbell training. Like, so let's take a couple months and get big and strong. And then let's cut off all that body fat. And then, and then we just do that forever. You just go yep. through cycles of bulking and cutting. Like that's the one, one of the things that the bros were, the bodybuilders were right about is it's just bulk and cut, bulk and yeah. cut, right? But, but, it's but a, just it's... to search, to circle back, Rip is absolutely right in the sense that, and, and I think there's another coach that I heard this from, so I'm stealing this, but they said, if you want to walk around as a jacked 35 year old, you have to spend your 20s getting as big and as strong as you possibly can and not worrying about body fat because that's when you grow, when it's easy to grow, when you're young and you've got ridiculous amounts of testosterone, just, yeah, get up to 275. If you wanted to maximize this journey, do it. Rip's right about that. And then when you, because if you're 275 and you're squatting, you know, 500 and pulling 700, and then you decide to cut, you're going to look ridiculous. You're going to yeah. be right. But the problem that we, that so many guys face is they, they want everything all at once and they want both, you know, so that, so they want to do both at the same time and they never accomplish either. Yeah. So yeah. I think it might've, might've been you who posted something recently, or I can't remember, but the point, point was it kind of fit into my, where I'm at with my physique. Like if I want to look good, with a t-shirt on, I need to be 170, 175 pounds. If I want to look good 
in the summer with my shirt off, I need to be 160 pounds. So how do you strike that balance? And it's kind of going through the cycles that you talked about. That's, that's the approach that I take. It's, it's the curse, man, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you, you know, when I, so I had to cut to take a photo for the cover of the book and, or the back cover of the book and all my marketing stuff. And, you know, so I had to go back down and m- most of the time I just felt small and, <laughs> and, and weak and my right. joints hurt and I, and I was miserable cause I wasn't, I couldn't have any alcohol. I wasn't eating anything <laughs> and, you know, and then the only time when you're that, if you're a natural guy, the only time you're going to like the way you look is right after your workout, when you have a pump that last point, <laughs> that last 20 minutes, you'll, you'll be like, okay, all right which is exactly when I took the photo. It's like, <laughs> like literally you're like doing curls and then you're flexing and you, and you snap the photo and you think like, okay, I look, you know, I look decent yeah. in that, but, but then then you deflate. If, if I just, yeah. T- if I took the picture 20 minutes later and just relaxed, I would look like, does this guy even work out? Like, he, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, That's so true. Yeah. Or, or you'll like the way you look at the beach or the pool with your shirt off because right when you're when you're lean and you have abs and you are and you don't have a shirt on it gives the illusion of size right? right but the rest of the time no one's they're going to be like you coach barbell training like seriously <laughs> like you the flip side to that is if you're so right now you know i i'm back up it's win, it's winter bulk time so <laughs> i'm back up to like 230 you know i think i took the photo at 197 and now oh, I'm 230, yeah. which is my normal kind of comfortable. I can eat whatever I want and enjoy my mm-hmm. life. Um, and you look better in a t-shirt. You look, you know, you your upper body looks more defined and you look like a bigger dude. Then when you take your shirt off at the <laughs> pool, you have, they're like, you don't have any abs. Like you just look <laughs> doughy. And who caught your winter coat? Yeah, you can't. So you can't win. So the answer is steroids. You just take steroids, and then you can have both. And that's. I mean, that's I what. I, that was the point of my tweet. Is like that's why I don't they remember do seeing it. that in the book. Where is that? That's the next the book. Oh. <laughs> that's the yeah. Oh. We're gonna. Be, turns out, guys, you really. It's gonna be one. It's gonna be a PDF. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's the steroids. it's the liver it's the liver king plan. Oh God, those were beautiful emails, man. That guy thought that whole thing through. He's like, a, he's a disturbed guy. I mean, you think, <laughs> so so many of uh, the people who are popular influencers are, you know, there was a there was an article someone linked to, I forget, but it was about the fact that most popular people that get a lot of traction online are just like these extreme I think they call it like extremophiles. Mm. where they're just like all in on this one thing and everybody goes with them because they, you know, but they're not normal because normal people are balanced and they, you know, they do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, but it's like, no, you gotta be the, Oh, you want, you gotta be Huberman and just like, I'm going to give a two hour (laughs) podcast on water. It's like, okay. And here's 46 supplements you should take before you go to sleep. And I'm like, oh, but, right. but people, everything's too easy now. We have too much free time. And so they're just like, I'm going to obsess about my, I'm going to wear a continuous glucose monitor and a sleep tracker. And I'm just going to obsess about every, like I wake up, I go, I don't know. I feel okay. I guess I slept enough. And, <laughs> I woke and, up. And if I drink half a bottle of whiskey, I don't sleep that well. So maybe I should... <laughs> Right. But we're, well, we're that's, just, that's just, really the important thing. And like the awesome part about your book is that it's not about the extremes. And, and some people will probably read the book and be like, it's got to be more complicated than that. <laughs> show, show me the real deal. Like, yeah. What's the magic? What's the one weird trick? You know, they, what is they, the, uh, yeah, so, but that's why I'm not selling like, you know, a ton of books. I mean, it's doing fine and I'm happy, but it's, it's because I don't, I, I'm not like you need, this is the one magic thing. Cause that's bullshit. It doesn't work. The one magic thing is in the application consistently of the basics in this book. That's the, that's the part that people really struggle to do, but distilling it down to the basics makes it more likely somebody will 
stick to it. Well, so let's kind of yes. get into some of the specifics of the book and kind of talk about what the plan you lay out in there is. And I do want to point out, like, even though this book is written for men, you know, and there's a lot of things in the book that divide men up into categories and give them starting places and landmarks and things like that. The principles of building muscle, getting lean, getting strong, all that stuff still applies to women. So about I, half yeah, of our listeners fact, are women. I'm working on a, I, I didn't expect the response from women who actually bought the book and, and it's been great. Um, so I am working on a supplemental PDF to just with minor adjustments for the nutrition plan and the uh, workout programs to, to take what's in the, cause you're right. It, this, the, this, the, the actual tactics apply to everybody. I mean, the right. food, the food amounts and the nutrition plans are for men. Uh, but that's a, you can, but the overall message and the programs and how it works, it would work for literally anyone. So, yeah, but I am working on that. So it'll be up on my website and hopefully okay. a month, in, like by, for the month, but anyway, Cool. What, what, so, what do we want it? All right. So let's, uh, and we'll kind of talk about what the three main steps of going through this are and, and how people kind of mess it up and how we can avoid that. And I wish, <laughs> I, you know, I'm 44 right now. I wish I had found this book when in my twenties, because I completely missed out on an entire decade of building that base for me. It was like built that base in my mid thirties, if I'm being honest. And I'm just now, you know, yeah reaping the benefits of that. So some guys listening to this right now and they're in their twenties, you're in luck. Listen up. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, so, I, mean, I, like I said, I wrote the book. I wish I had. Yeah, exactly. Back in the day. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't get the results that they want because they skip the very first step that you talk about in the book, which is getting stronger. Why is strength so important and why does it have to be the base of this whole thing? Well, strength is, Force production, right? Your ability to lift. I mean, and that, and it's tied directly with muscle growth, mm -hmm. you know? So as you're, if you want your muscles to get bigger, they have to get stronger. They have to produce more force. This is why, you know, going for a walk doesn't make your legs big. It's just, it's not heavy enough. Mm -hmm. So if you, if the goal, whether your goal is, I really want to be strong or whether your goal is, I want to be jacked the 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 way that you reach that goal is the same which is you have to get your muscle stronger so there i guess the inverse would be there's no way to do this without there's no way to get bigger and put on lean tissue without getting stronger so that's where we start it is, sounds it, obvious to you but a lot of people skip that and they just go into the gym and you know grab some light dumbbells and do a thousand reps since obviously high volume and, is what makes your muscles grow <laughs> It, it makes them sore. That's but air, air quotes there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, and the thing is for, a, for an untrained individual, anything will work. That ineffective program will do, will work for a while, mm -hmm. but at some point it has to get heavier. You know, we're trying to force an adaptation here. And so if we know that, like, I remember talking to my dad, cause he's, he you know, he's in his seventies, but he was telling me like, yeah, I go to the gym three times a week and I bench press 95 pounds. And I said, every time? He said, yeah. He said, have you That's ever tried 100? Yeah, he said, what about 100? He's like, no, I do 95. I'm like, well, we know you can do 95. <laughs> so how about we try on? <laughs> Just didn't compute that, that yeah. it needs. So if you, if you have to increase the amount of force you're requiring your muscles to produce, it means you got the easiest way to do that is lift more weight. Right now, if you're doing sets of 20, it's just, it's a really inefficient way to do that because they're, it's a lot of, you know, you're primarily working muscular endurance at that point. Mm -hmm. So we start with just the basic tried and true sets of five. Let's just do five reps. We'll, we'll, we'll pick the, the most bang for your buck exercises for a novice squats, presses, deadlifts, throwing some chin ups and we're just going to add weight every time you go in for as long as you can. It's a, it's a classic novice progression. Bill Starr did it. Rip it toe made it real popular. And I'm just stealing Bill Starr's program <laughs> kind of for the, mostly for the beginning, which is, you know, five sets of five, but ascending in weight because it's real fast. And so it's just a three, you know, two or three day a week program, squat, bench, deadlift, squat, press, deadlift, and you go up 
you take your top set up five pounds every time for as long as you can. And that usually lasts about three to six months yeah. for the average guy. And then we move on to more fun stuff. Yeah. We're going to, br- then we start, but you got to build that foundation, you know, and, and part of it is learning how to push yourself, which is one of the things so many guys don't know how to do. I mean, I, I've been training for 20 years. I kind of just figured it out how to grind, how to, how to, how to take it, unrack a bar and have it scare the shit out of you and go. And instead of going like, Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, and then just like going to the bottom of a rep and bailing. Cause you gave up before you even started the rep, mm-hmm. which I used to do all the time. And I see clients do it. I'm like, you quit, you quit on that before you even took it out of the rack. Yeah. But to, to, but there's some point where when you do it long enough, you unrack that bar and you feel that weight on your back and you feel the fear and you go, okay, mm-hmm. let's go. Like, let's, you, that's, that's how you think this is going to go. Like, and it motive and it's fun. It's fun yeah. to, because, you know, and, and so learning to do that and to grind on reps and to push yourself through the discomfort, which is all this is, it's like, let's find day one in the gym is let's go in and find a weight that makes you a little uncomfortable. And then the next time we're going to go a little heavier and a little heavier (laughs) and you, and that's, and you're doing that for 20 years. Yeah. But but learning how to, how to do that is really, I mean, that starts in the novice phase. It starts on day one and, and it, it takes, so, so this is, I've said this a million times, but yes, this is about making your body stronger. But man, does it do a number on your, on your brain in terms of, you know, I, like I, I, I wrote this in the book, like I am no Navy SEAL for most of my life. I felt like, I felt like a pussy, <laughs> you know, in, like you, like, have you ever met a, like an active duty, like special forces guy? You just can feel it they walk into the room and you can, you can, you're like, okay, this is the alpha male of the, he, the, right. the him, <clears throat> whatever he's got. Like, I don't know where that came from, but damn, it's palpable. And, <laughs> right. and, and you, it's like, it's, it's primal, you know, like, okay, I'm now the low ranking male in this group. Yeah. And it feels, it feels shitty. Right. Cause you're like, how do, how do I do that? And you, there's all these books and there's all these bullshit you know, men's ma- on Twitter, it's an ins- these masculine testosterone, like, you know, women hate hating red pill, these communities of like, really, it's you go down a dark hole in terms of in that <laughs> world with men, right? Where wow. they where the but that's what they're looking for is they're trying to get a taste of like, how do I move up this hierarchy? You know, and You get strong. I mean, obviously I know that, you know, when you have a a hammer, everything looks like a nail and I'm a barbell coach. So I think this fixes every problem (laughs) in the world, but it, but man, I can't think of another, I think Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a good, is a similar thing in that Mm -hmm. you get in there and you have conflict and you have to actually throw down with a guy and, and, and that can have the same, but in terms of ease of application, and to to go to have to go into the gym three times a week every week and test yourself in a very controlled environment with a little bit more weight oh and and then you take that and compound it over a lifetime it makes you it makes you tougher it makes you men- i am way more mentally strong than i would have been if i had never gotten into this amen I- and yeah I can think of some, like, I remember when I was starting to get to those places where, where you unrack the bar and you're like, huh, if, am I going to be able to get back up? You know, if, after I let this thing lower me down, like that confidence after you do it, I can remember walking into like concerts and things like that, social situations and, and kind of looking around the room and be like, okay, if, if things go wrong here, I feel like I can, you know, be a leader in this circumstance and help people Dude, get I'll, to safety. I'll, I'll tell you something. And, and, so I, the other night, I, I set a PR for my squat for a set of five, right? 
I think it was like 410. I I'd done I'd never I'd done it for like a triple, but I'd never done 410 for five. And and it, I don't know, I just had it that night. I'd been yeah. working on it for a couple of weeks and it just it just went. And I think it was actually when I was doing that little back and forth with Will. Uh-huh. You know, when we were just talking <laughs> shit to each other on Instagram. And it but it it was like, okay, I'm gonna I wanna post this and throw shade at Will. So I turned the camera on and 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 it sort of motivated me. But then we went out to dinner that night and I remember I got up to go to the bathroom, very nice restaurant. And I'm looking around this room and I'm just kind of scanning all the guys and, and I look around and I go, now maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe there was a power lifter in there and I just didn't see him, but I was like, I'm probably the only guy in this room that could do that yeah. right now. And it felt good. Like you, it, you feel there's a confidence that comes with it and a, and a calmness mm-hmm. having, really tested yourself and i remember this when i used to do jujitsu going into the class i would be very nervous walking out of the gym at the end of the night you have this relaxation of like nothing 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 phases me that thing i was worried about at work it's not a big deal Mm -hmm. because i just had i just dealt with some real shit you know and and getting under that bar and doing that it's like however stressed I am before I go into a workout, however much I don't want to do the workout, it, I feel, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, if you train, you know this, it's, yeah. it's completely different afterwards. You're just yep. this sense of well being, even if it didn't go that well, at oh, least yeah. you got in there and you got, and you, and you tried and, and that going back to, you know, what we were talking about earlier with just helping these guys, these young men, improve their dating life it's like you can read all the bullshit books ebooks you want about faking confidence but you you're really gonna learn about yourself going through the process and doing something hard and sticking with it and then seeing the results it's like it just changes your whole mentality yeah and it's not like meathead stuff you know it's real it's It's it's, i can't think of a more like powerful psychological it's but you know therapy is good people some people need to go to therapy but in the i'm sure you feel the same way and i'm sure your wife feels the same way which is in the absence of this regular dose of stress in my life man i my i'm sure i would be on an antidepressant or something or some yeah. anti-anxiety medication you know? yeah there's physiological reasons for that too um yeah be- you made me think that, uh, I read a book last year or earlier this year called do hard things and talks Is that about Brad, uh, Brad Madison, I think his oh, name was Steve, Steve, Steve Mag- Magnus, Steve, Steve Magnus, Magnus and yeah. Brad Stol- Stolberg, something like that. <laughs> yeah. That guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. um, but you know, the whole point of the book was you don't build, you don't build the confidence to do hard things by doing these pump yourself up machismo motivational quotes kind of thing. You build confidence to do hard things by being prepared to do them in the first place and then actually doing them. It's like this Which self-fulfilling is, prophecy and that's yes. what barbell training is. And, and, and this craze with, you know, this David Goggins style, like, mm-hmm. I mean, th- what that guy did is impressive for sure. But I remember hearing, listening to one of the first podcasts he was on, I think he was on Rogan or something talking about You know, yeah, I just, I had never run before my life. And then I decided to do a 24 hour marathon and I was pissing blood. And I was like, dude, that's just dumb. Like, how about you, how about you go run a mile and then two miles? And why do you have to do this? Now, maybe he needed that to jolt himself out of this place in his life, but that's terrible advice because yeah not many people are going to do that. They're not going to, and then they're going to be like, well, I couldn't do the marathon. So yeah. I just forget it. It's so much better to, to just have a vi- a little goal. And that's in the book. I talk a lot about setting realistic expectations, you know, yeah. and this is, and I was just on a, a call the other day with a, a new client and, you know, he's, he said, he said, so when does this, when, it, when is this working? Like, when does this work? Because I've been doing this for a month <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is, like if you don't, that's the one thing about what we do is you, it's not, you can't buy a 500 pound deadlift. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> you can't grease the palm of the bouncer and get a 500 pound deadlift. You have to, 
show up and put in the work and that's why you get the benefit. Yeah. Right. Like learning <laughs> to do that hard stuff. So yeah. yeah. The old conversation around expectations at that point, Andy Baker, <laughs> Andy Baker said something funny one time when he was on the podcast about, you know, somebody asked him like, well, what's the bridge to get to, you know, a 500 pound deadlift. And he's like, well, it's the 495 pound deadlift and the 490 pound deadlift. It's the process of going through all the steps that it takes to get there. There is no shortcut. And that's why like starting, you know, the book and, and this plan for people at getting stronger is so important, not only for the physical benefits you're going to get, but you're going to need all this mental toughness you're building in this stage to stay consistent with everything through to the end. Yeah. And that's real. But the thing is, and I want people to know that is that it's not, it, you don't have to have it when you start, you know, you don't have to go. If you, if you train in a public gym and you see the the dude pulling 700 and he's just ripped and, you know, and you just look and you're like, I'm so far away from that. I'm never going to get there. It's like, no, you, you just, you, you just start, you just start small and you let it compound. And there's a tipping point. You know, I knew if I could get, so at, as if you've done an, any type of linear novice progression, the end of the beginning is fun because you're new and you're learning a new skill. And every time you go up in weight, it, it like every workout, you add five pounds and every day is a PR mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, cool. And my body's changing. And it's like, this is fun. The end of the novice phase, it's like you're laying in bed at night thinking, if I don't go to sleep right now, I am not going to get my deadlift. I don't, how many grams of protein did I have yesterday? I don't, and you're thinking about your evening workout all day and you're just, and, and all the reward you get for, for getting in there and dealing with that anxiety and grinding out the rep is that you get to go up five pounds next time, <laughs> two days later. And right. that's, that's the time when I would lose clients Yep. because they're like, this isn't fun, man. I dread every workout. I'm, I don't feel good. My knees hurt. And I feel like I'm getting fat and, and, and what, so I can just press again and put two pounds on it. But, yeah. but if you can get them to that next phase, if I could get them through the novice phase, then we always ended a novice phase with a testing day where it would be like a little mock powerlifting meet. Okay. This is what you could squat on day one. And now we're going to test your deadlift and we're going to test your one rep max. And they, oh my God, they loved it. They yeah. love, they're like that because because you see it they're like oh this actually because now they're only doing one rep and they're moving you know I, I squatted three plates i squatted four plates i I deadlifted four plates like and then you're out of that grindy novice phase and into intermediate land and mm -hmm. that's where things get a lot more fun so you know my goal a, a lot of people were asking about the this novice phase versus the starting strength novice phase and whatever and and my goal with the novice phase in this program is i want to get you to the intermediate phase yeah as fast as i can and maybe we're going to leave some gains on the table you know maybe if we had run the starting strength linear progression and you had drank a gallon of milk you you tap out at 365 but you're going to tap out at 315 and we're going to switch to the intermediate, but you're going to, you're not going to burn out. Yeah. You know, the, the, the thing about the end of the starting strength novice linear progression is unfortunately the only thing waiting for you at the end is the Texas method with even more torture. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's like, Oh, okay. Well now what we're going to do is we're going to take what you've been doing for three sets of five, which you totally beat to shit on. And we're going to do five sets. Of five. <laughs> right. I mean, but oh, we're also going to squat another time. Yeah. Here's the thing. That program works. It does. It got me that through program, a plateau that, after my that program. Energy. Yeah. And it, it, it sucks. And Rip will tell you it's for a very specific person. It's for a lifter. And you know, like, you know, if you have, you have clients, like, you know, who the lifters are, mm -hmm. you know, these are the guys who, this is their deal. They, they, they're going to, they're going to do what you say. They're going to sleep. They're going to eat. They're going to train. They're going to log everything. They're never going to miss a workout and they're motivated. I don't work with, I don't work with a lot yeah. of lifters. You know, I work with real people who want to be a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, not fat and not hurt. <laughs> right. A carbon copy of our client right there. 
Yeah. And, and so that's really the, the, that's, that's what the book was for. It's like, I want a book for guys that are like, I actually don't really like working out that much, (laughs) (laughs) but I want to be a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, a little bit leaner. Yeah. Like I want to check the box that says I worked out today and, and I didn't waste my time in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I made productive use of my time in the gym. And, and that's really who I was targeting because you have to keep in mind that like most fitness people who work in fitness, who've made a career out of it, they actually love it. They know like they don't hire coaches. Like you might hire a coach for a form check or you might hire a coach to do a program for you. But most normal people hire coaches because they're not motivated to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And so they go, well, if I pay this guy, then I'll have to go. And then that'll get me motivated. Right. And, and that's normal people. Yeah. But most of the people who, most of the coaches that put stuff on Instagram and, you know, and put out all this content, it's like, they weren't ever that guy. They always loved it. And so all the advice that they're giving is like, they forget that the person they're talking to is like kind of lukewarm on this whole fitness thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, like, I'd love to have abs and everything, but like, you're, this is a lot, man. Can you, as soon as, so that's, and, as, soon as and they I, come I out with a pill for this, I'm in. Oh yeah. They're, they're not like, I don't love barbell training. I just want to like get laid. So, and, and I've always, that's been my disposition and my, one of my best friends and, and former, uh, one of the coaches at my gym that I hired, we were like, right on that same wavelength where we, we used to look at each other and he would just, you know, he'd, he'd be squatting like, 550 for a set of five and he just sit he'd rack the bar and he'd be like do you like this like do you even enjoy it and i'm like no i don't but we like but what we agreed on was that as much as we don't like lifting we 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 dislike how we feel when we don't lift even more yeah so if i if i miss a, a couple workouts i start to feel lazy and mad mm-hmm. and just and i don't like it so that's the, the motivation yeah. to train is really to avoid that feeling. Not because I'm like, like I have to, school, I have to lift tonight. I don't want to do it. I don't, I would so much rather do other stuff. Like I don't want to do it at all, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. You that's know? called discipline because, too. Yeah. And so that's, I'm trying to talk. I wanted to talk to those guys who are like, what's the minimum intervention that we can do to, to help you solve this problem? where you don't, you know, you could look better and you could be stronger and happier, but like, you know, how can we do that in a way that isn't, you know, it, that, that you'll do. Yeah. It doesn't take over your life and that you'll do. Exactly. And, and still right. And not have it be bullshit, not have it be some, you know, snake oil or yeah. some ebook that promises you like, no, these are actual strategies that work, but let's, let's, lay them out in a way that you're not going to hate your life. Right. And, and get, so get big and shredded using only one kettlebell. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so let's get, let's get into the, let's do the hard thing and lay the foundation in the novice phase. And let's go into the intermediate phase and let's balance the hard stuff with the, with the fun stuff. Let's do, let's do our squats and deadlifts, but let's do our curls. You okay. Know, yeah. So, you're gonna, so you, let's get into some of the fun stuff then. So we're, we're strong. Let's move on to phase two, getting bigger. How are we going to get bigger with our avatar, which in the book I believe is called Nate. <laughs> yeah. Nate was the guy in the bar that I, the little, doughy, <laughs> yeah. the little doughy dude that I just wanted. And God, man, you just see him everywhere. Once, oh, once yeah. I saw him, I was like, Oh God, these guys are everywhere. And so like, much potential. Just, so much, like, so, Oh, you just, you want to sh- grab them and just be like, just, Come on, man. Um, well, getting stronger and getting bigger are intertwined. So mm-hmm. phase one is get bigger and stronger, right? That's real, and so that can extend into the intermediate phase. It, you know, for I break it down where it's like if you're an underweight male, you should try and gain 20 pounds. And if you're a kind of skinny fat average guy, you should hold steady and if you're a, uh, or gain 10 pounds, you know, through mm-hmm. the novice phase. And then if you're an overweight, if you got a lot of body fat, just try and hang tight. Because if you're 260 and you have a high body fat percentage and you just stay there and lift for six months, 
you're going to weigh the same, but you'll be able to tighten yeah. your belt three notches. And, recomp. and then we get into the second phase, which is actually fat loss. Yeah. Now that you've built this foundation, let's figure out how to cut off that body fat and show people that you actually lift weights. Yeah. And that, yeah. And so. most people, most people like, I don't know most people, but a lot of people skip to fat loss in the skinny fat phase right off the bat. They don't ever lay yeah. the base. And- yeah. I was just talking, I just having a conversation with, I mean, this is the, uh, this is the conversation that's as old as, you know, as long as I've been doing it, it's the same thing, which is, do I cut first? I feel like I should cut first. And it's like, okay, you're 165 pounds. You have zero muscle mass and you want to be 10% body fat. So you're going to weigh like 135. <laughs> you're going to look like you belong in, you're coming out of a concentration camp. Like you'll probably just break during, during your strength. Yeah. You'll just break in half. Yeah. You can't, it's not going to work, but they don't want to get, so body composition, as, as you know, is, is lean muscle and fat, right? So we can skew that by losing fat. We can also skew that by gaining more muscle tissue. So it's really important that in the beginning, I don't, I almost never advise someone just starting out to cut because the first, the skinny guy doesn't need to cut and the, and the average guy doesn't need to cut. You know, if I have a guy who's over 300 pounds and bordering on diabetes, like, yeah, we need to cut. Like, and that guy can get stronger and build muscle yeah. while he's cutting because he's a unicorn, right? Yeah. <laughs> but most guys need to spend a couple, you know, half a year, a year building before you have anything worth showing off. Yeah. You know, so we're talking about a nutrition conversation here. So what, what are the main things that our, um, our avatar needs to focus on with their nutrition as they're, uh, well, you know, as they're in the novice phase, trying to build some strength and muscle, and then how does it change? What do we focus on as we start to get lean and show off the the spoils of our efforts? (laughs) Um, yeah. So my thing with, with everybody is, I mean, it's not my thing. It's uh, protein. We need protein. That's what builds your muscle. So if we're going to do baby steps with a client, it's like you just need to eat more than enough protein to, mm-hmm. to make this worth your time. And that's that's another common – I can – if a guy shows up to the gym, I can make sure he works out. You know, I can make sure he lifts. I can, but I, I charge a lot to come to your house and force feed you protein, <laughs> right? And, and they just, they, that's, and they'll, I, I would say the protein is even more important than the lifting. It's like, if you're going to bust your ass in the gym three days a week and you're going to eat 150 grams of protein, it's, we're going to make three weeks of progress and you're going to hit a brick wall. It happens all the time. And they're like, this is, this program isn't working. It's like, have you gained any weight? No. In fact, I lost a pound. It's like, okay. So, so, <laughs> it's hard. It's yeah, hard to convince yeah, people of the importance yes, of their nutrition. The, the food is the hardest part of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's because it's not fun. It's boring, right? <laughs> Eating a bowl of beef and rice two or three times a day is boring. But you have to, it, it has to be, you know, we follow a workout program and then people go like, willy-nilly with they just go by feel with their food it's like those you need a workout program and you need a meal program and the workout program is real boring and basic and so should the meal plan so that's why that was the controversial part of my book and the the part that i was the most nervous about writing was the nutrition section because i i mean you read it so it's mm-hmm. like these like we're not even gonna talk about calories <laughs> These are the meals. There are four meals. Right? I thought it was it's an like, interesting approach you took, for sure. Well, because the, because the thing that because the other thing doesn't work in my experience. It you know where it's like okay, you have we're gonna allot you three thousand calories, and here are your macros, and then you can just take any approach you want to hitting those macros. And there's a million different foods that you could put together, and it's like overwhelming. Food and Tetris. I remember, I remember there was like, this came from like, all like every idea comes from like real conversation with a client who was like, 
asking me about macros and blah, 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 blah. And I'm telling him you need this and we're writing it on the whiteboard. And then you divide by four and then you divide by nine for fat. And what, <laughs> you know, and he's like, uh-huh. And he goes, well, what do you eat? And I'm like, uh, you know, I, I'm real lazy. So I just take like a couple pounds of beef and a couple cups of rice and some spinach and sweet potatoes. And I mix it all in a thing and I portion it out. And then I just eat that. He's, I was like, I said, my, you know, I, it, my wife calls it dog food. It's not that it's, I like it, but I'm a boring, like, I like boring things. It's just, it, and, and he looked at me and he goes, can you send me the recipe? I was like, yeah, sure. And I sent him the recipe and he was like, dude, this is, I just, this is what I, I just want someone to tell me what to eat mm -hmm. and I'll just eat it. And so that's the approach I decided to go with in the book, which is like, these are the, these are exactly the four meals. Here's how you make them. And then here's how you arrange them. If you're, you know, a skinny guy, here's how you arrange them. If you're a average guy and here's how you arrange them. If you're a fat, so they're just, they're three meal plans. And they each, I mean, I did the math, like I did the work behind the yeah. scenes to, you know, I so figured. they each go up about 500 calories. But the idea is, look, pick one, eat it, see what happens, see what happens on the scale. And then when it stopped working and, and you're trying to bulk, go to the next one. And if, yeah. it, and if you're trying to cut, go down one. Right. And so we're not talking about calories, we're talking about food. You right. know, and, and you're already, all it is, is we're just manipulating how much rice you, so in one meal plan, right. you're eating two cups of rice and in the next meal plan, you're eating one and a half and maybe like you don't put peanut butter in your protein shake or something. Right. They're very small, but we're working with what you're already doing and it's very concrete. And so I knew like when I sent it to my editor who wasn't a lifter at all, he goes, I, he's like, I would never do this. And I was like, Oh God, <laughs> this is a terrible idea. I shouldn't, I shouldn't put this in the book. It's like, I should just go and do what everybody else does and do. Here's how you calculate your macros and blah, blah, blah. And then you just have to invent. And, and I thought, no, I'm going to do this. Well, you and, stay true I realized, well, I realized this guy is not my target. Like this guy's like a runner. He doesn't care about lifting. And so, and, and so I did, but he did convince me to put in a, like a sort of how to make a meal on the fly if you don't want to follow these exact meals that I lay out. And, and, the, and the ultimate goal with the meals is like, look, this is just a framework. This is a concept. Mm. If you don't want to think about this, eat these foods in these amounts and it will get you where you want to go. But we have a Reddit, you know, like a subreddit and guys are posting different recipes. And like, that's the idea is pick an amount of food, eat it every day, watch what happens and then adjust it up or down. And so if you're lazy like me and you don't want to think, here's exactly what to eat. If you want to spice it up and swap out oats for whatever and, and yeah. you know, they do it. Like, there's some great recipes. Guys, I was like, damn, I never thought about that. Some guys making like a honey glazed soy, whatever. Like, I would never do that. But like, um, but yeah, that and, and, and then I and then I put it out in the book and I started getting. I remember I started getting emails from, from got young, like young guys, like the, my avatar. And they were like, dude, this is exactly what I needed. Just, I don't want to think about macros. I don't want to think about calories. Just tell me exactly what to eat and I'll eat it. And I got enough of those coming in that I knew like I made the right call. It's definitely not the right approach for everybody. Some people want the flexibility but yeah, I think there's enough guys out there who just don't want to think about it because it's the food is overwhelming or it can be. Yeah. So it's the hardest part to to think about and to stick to for sure. But like yeah. I said, you, you stuck to the, the approach of the book, a practical plan to help average guys build awesome bodies. It doesn't say an individual pl individualized plan with tons of variety that factors <laughs> in every single scenario to help <laughs> this one specific guy. So yeah, you it's, it works for what it was supposed to be. Yeah. There are limitations and, you know, you have to do sort of a, if you're going to tell everybody, if you're going to create a workout template or a food template, you, there's some generalization, but yeah, at least it's a good starting point where, where I, I'm expecting that a guy will go, okay, like I see what he's doing here. I see the logic behind these meals or the structure of the meals. And now that I've been doing it for a couple months, I feel like I can tweak it a little bit. It's like, right. Dude, I can do swap it. out and then chicken give, breasts and thighs. Yeah, and give food. me the recipe because I'll put out another book with. <laughs> I'm I'm not saying these are the most amazing meals at all. Like they're 
<laughs> they're incredibly boring, but they take no time to cook and they get the job done. So book number book number three is going to be a recipe book. I can already tell, Paul. Oh, after, after for the women's sure. book. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get. Yeah, no, there's the, the guys on Reddit are posting up. Like I said, some really cool. I'll have to check know, that some, out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a cool. It, it's cool to see them riff on it. Well, let's but, uh, let we got to address a big elephant in the room here. That really is the, probably the thing that keeps people from really getting results. We got the plan, but the mental game usually gets in the way of people staying consistent for long enough. So let's talk about all the stuff we got to do to, to stay consistent for long enough to see results. What are the main kind of mindset issues you see people run into or what are some strategies to avoid them? I mean, how long is this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, uh, my no. AirPods already beeped at me, so I probably need to switch Uh-oh. over to headphones in a minute, but I, I do <laughs> okay. want to hear your, I do want to hear your opinion on this because this is, the, you know, Everything we've talked about so far is gold. Everybody has yeah. to do these things to get results, but it's the six inches between our ears that really keeps people from ach- sticking with this stuff. I, I think, and, and I think I'm, I probably differ than how some other people would answer this, but I don't think, I don't think you can fake it. So I think you have to set the bar low and I think you have to have a, a, a big goal of like, I, I want to get in better shape. I want to deadlift 500, whatever. But I think you have to look at every day. You have to look for quick wins, you know, because it's a long process. And I think I wrote about it in the book. If, if I can get a guy who commits for three months because he's excited and you can get someone excited for, you can keep someone motivated for three months. It's not that hard. Um, But if that guy at some point gets a compliment from the girl at Starbucks or the girl at his office, which I know is not allowed anymore, but you know, a little like, Hey, Hey, have you been working out? Or like, Hey, or she grabs your little, she grabs your bike, like a friend, like, Ooh, what's that? Like grabs your, dude, I got that guy for life. It's getting to that point. The same, this happened with women all the time. Like my female clients, they're like, oh, I don't want to get bulky, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, just if I, if I could get a butt compliment from a boyfriend or, you know, so, a, a friend of theirs, it was like, what's going Like you, your butt looks great in those jeans. Forget it. All this, all this stuff about getting bulky goes out the window. And they're just like, I am a lifter now. Cause that's, you know, it's so you, you have to, you have to have, you have to experience those small victories and you have to, you have to celebrate them and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, be proud of yourself, but, but know going in, this is not, this isn't something that I'm just going to do for an outcome. It's more of a lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. All the mental game, you know, that there's a lot in the book I write about, you know, how strategies for dealing it's i mean the cutting part is that's just like setting up your environment for success with losing weight but in terms of just sticking with something long enough you learn kind of as you go and and if you the motivation comes from just compounding a bunch of small victories mm-hmm. and and then looking and and seeing the progress which is why you know this program isn't There's, I didn't, none of, nothing I wrote in this is revolutionary. I didn't, I didn't invent any of it. I stole it from guys who stole it from guys who stole it from, it's just just the boring stuff that we know works. But if you take a bunch of boring stuff that we know works and you do it for long enough, you're going to see progress. And if you see progress, it, it's either going to motivate you to keep going or it's not. Yeah. And And so there's nothing. And and then if you can, if it just becomes a part of your life and what you do and you like the small results you're getting and you keep going, it gets better and better. And then you don't even have to think about it. And then you get the, the mental stuff. Like we talked about earlier, where you're learning to grind and you're, and you, and you're learning and you're toughening yourself up, but that wasn't intentional. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't get into this thinking like, okay, I need to just like be an alpha male. So I'm going to, right. 
I'm going to just, this is the path and, and I'm going to wait 20 years to figure that out. No, you just like, I actually kind of like going to the gym or I like hanging out with these guys at the gym or I like what's happening to my body because I've been going to the gym. And then you look back in 20 years and you're like, man, I really learned a lot on that journey. So yeah, keep the expectations realistic. Know that it's, it's, it's five pounds at a time. It's one, if you're trying to lose body fat, it's one pound at a time. There's no shortcuts. And, you know, in terms of setting a date and a goal is, even if it's an artificial one, is really powerful. So for me, you know, I was thinking about cutting for a long time, but then when I, I knew I had to take a photo for the book, now there's a hard date. And that just, man, that snapped everything into focus. Yeah. Like I'm taking a picture on this day and I got to look as good as I can in three months. So let's do this. If it's, you know, a high school reunion, it, whatever, if it's your birthday, if you're going to Hawaii and you need, and you know, you're going to have your shirt off, you can use little mental tricks like that to stay motivated and you, but you got it. You have to pick some kind of date for a cut because yeah. you can always start cutting tomorrow and tomorrow <laughs> and tomorrow and you never get anywhere. So you got that. You have to trick yourself with, you have to shape your environment, get the junk food out. If the junk food, if the ice cream's not in the freezer and you have to drive to the store to get it, you're much less likely to give into a craving. So those little tactics are in, in the book about especially dealing with cutting, but Long-term motivation just for training in general is you, I, I feel like you're either going to take to it or you're not. And mm -hmm. if you can find a training partner or a community of people, even if it's online, you know, if you can find a community online to, to, to get you past that, that point where most people quit because yeah. most people quit. Yeah. Like literally nobody wants to do this. That's why you walk around <laughs> and most people look like shit. And I'm not trying to be, you know, it's true. Just go to the grocery store. Go. They they don't look because it's hard. Yeah. And, I mean, and you have to make it a priority and you have to want to do it. And and if wanting to get a girlfriend is the reason that you do it, great. If you know, I was talking to a guy on Twitter the other day who was posting about his mother losing like a hundred pounds. And my first question with that every single time is with because I've had a lot of clients that came in after losing a lot of weight and then they want to get stronger. And I was like, tell me the moment. Tell me the moment that you had where this decision became concrete. Because everybody wants to lose 20 pounds. Everybody wants to lose five pounds, right? But someone who's lost a hundred at a moment, and it's usually embarrassment. Mm. You know, they're they're they delay a flight because they can't find a seatbelt extender. And the guy next to you goes, well, I'm going to miss my daughter's soccer game because you're too fat. Ugh. That person, that person is going to lose the weight. Yeah. Because they're going to feel that. And, and that's it. And they, ne I mean, man, did they, they're on fire. Yeah. But if you have, I mean, I'm sure you work with people all the time that, that have not had that moment, you know, and and they're and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds, maybe five, whatever. It's like yeah. you're not, I mean, you'll you'll do it, but you're gonna gain 15 back because you have so my challenge, and I've always thought about this is how do you give someone that moment? Mm -hmm. How do you scare the how do you scare the shit out of them? How do you, I mean, I don't want to, you can't embarrass your clients, but how do you create that? Because that fire is like, man. That those people are motivated and they've all had it. Every single a, one has had it. And I don't, that's a tough I don't one know to experience answer. for somebody. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the answer for that either. That's a tough one. Yeah. I was like, do I just like just shame them in my gym and embarrass? <laughs> I was like, that's not going to be good for Yelp reviews, but, <laughs> but, but what's the alternative, right? Because like, you know what they need to do and you can't do it for them. Mm -hmm. And it, that is the most frustrating part of when I was working one-on-one -on -one with people in a gym is to have someone come to you crying because they are so frustrated with, they just are at rock bottom with their, their, they've, you know, they, they gained more weight and they thought they were losing it or they're, you know, and, and they're just like, I, I, and then you tell them what to do and they go buy donuts. Yeah. And like, I had a guy who was di diabetic um, and he was on insulin and, and he 
could not leave his job to start his own dream company because he needed the insurance. He couldn't take that risk. He always wanted to do his own thing and he couldn't take that risk. And we sat down and I said, look, you're early type two diabetes. Like, and like, you can, you can not have that disease. Mm -hmm. Like we can, you don't have type one, we can fix your diet. You can add muscle tissue you know, you can, and we can get your blood sugar under control. And there's a high likelihood that you can get off the drugs and get rid of it and, and then go and live this dream life that you want, that you fantasize about. And I bought him books on like the Atkins diet and, you know, and all this stuff. And we talked about it and went through what carbohydrates are and blood sugar and how it works. And we're not going to, you know, we're going to, because if you're type two, like a low carb diet is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. until you can get that under control right and um he was like yeah motivated all right and then next week i just asked him a question i would always ask clients like hey what you have for breakfast and he goes oh waffles and i was like uh we talked keto, about keto the, waffles we're not, or... we're not gonna have whatever you know because the blood sugar and we're gonna get off the thing and then you can start your business and blah. and he just looked at me and he was like but I like waffles. And I was like, okay, this, yeah. that it's like, it hurts you it's to so true, man. put it's that emotional, you, you know, cause you're doing with your clients online, right. Or where you're in person or with yeah. your wife's gym, like you, every day you go in there and you invest this emotional labor into them. You care, you want them to succeed, you know, and you have the tools to give them what they need, but they have to do it. Yeah. And and man, after, after countless disappointments like that, because you feel like a failure, like, what did I not convey to this guy to, you know, and then you carry that around like, oh, like, man, I, I, I failed this guy because I couldn't convince him to do this really important thing. And then eventually you, you realize like, you can, you can do, you can, you can do your best, but they have to make the decision to do it. So. I would say, you know, any coach that has never lost sleep over a client that's not doing what they know they need to do, then they're probably not a very good coach. And then you just, you want it so bad for somebody and you try to jump through all these hoops. How can I, you know, what, what approach can I take? What can I change to finally make them want to do the thing? But a lot of it comes back to, did they ever have that moment where they knew they had to make a change? Yeah. Cause that guy will change. I mean, he will, there will be a day where he goes to the hospital. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and it may be too late. You yeah. know, it's like they, it's like smoking. They say, yeah, everybody quits. You know, <laughs> yeah, good you're going to quit at some point, but is it real enough for you? Is, is it real enough for you to do it now while you still, while it's, while it's easier? So, yeah. um, but, but for my, my target guy isn't in that world. He's, yeah. you know, so, so the motivation is a different thing. I don't need to scare him into, right. You know, it, it's, it's more about let's start this process. And I, I think that's really what it is, is the biggest issue that the, the reason that most guys in my experience don't get the results they want is they're confused about what to do, especially now there's way too much information coming at them all the time by a bunch of people who want to make a bunch of money and, and have to sell the new thing. The boring thing is not proprietary. The boring thing is not fun. It's not. And so if you want to make a name for yourself in social media world, you have to be like this, okay, you're going to turn your wrist three degrees this way. And that's going to just blow up. It's like, dude, what yeah. the fucking wait, man. Like, and so they're overwhelmed, confused about what to do. So they just pick nothing or they program hop. They do yeah. this guy's thing and then they do this guy's thing and then they do this guy's thing and they don't stick with anything long enough to let it work. Right. Yeah. And they don't pick a goal. They don't go, all right, look, I get it. I, I, I know that eventually I want to be ripped with abs at the beach, but in order to do that, I've got to spend a year getting big and strong and then do that. Yeah. And that's really what, I'm trying to lay out in the book. It's just, look, this is how it works, man. It's not since it's not, there's nothing flashy about it. It's just, this is what you got to do. And it's boring. And, but you know, if it resonates that, that would, you know, 
I guess it's information, just good information passed down. Like I said, this is nothing, any, none of this yeah, is there, new there's information. Our, EC Simkowski says there's nothing new in nutrition. It's the basics that continue. There's nothing to new work. in lifting either, right? <laughs> right? It's like, okay, you have a, you know, okay, fine. We have like a Tendo unit you can hang from your barbell and tell you how fast. <laughs> right. Okay, that's, that's kind of cool, right? That's a cool thing, but you still have to do it. Yeah, but so, did you lift more like, weight? Right, exactly. Well, you do so, it. You do a good job of you know presenting the basic information in an entertaining way in the book too. So I would encourage people to go grab it, even if this stuff is like, eh, I don't know if I'm really going to be into it. You'll be entertained by the book, and you'll definitely take away a lot of things that you can put into place. No, thank you. Well, um, there's man, I might even want to break this thing up into two episodes. This is such so many good things. What? Um, <laughs> Where's the best place for people to buy the book for you to make the most money off of it? And where, <laughs> should, where should people go to find out more about you um, and to just connect with you online? Sure. Um, well, the book was never intended to be a money-making enterprise. So uh, I just did it the easiest way possible, which is through Amazon. So you can get it uh, at Amazon. Uh, you can also get it on uh, my friend Grant at the Strength Co. They make, you know, barbells and or plates and and very cool company so if you need if you need the best plates in the industry the strength co is where you go and then you can also pick up a copy of my book he has some copies for sale there that or amazon and then my website is hornstrength.com we also do a for guys that are interested in you know like you you're doing this digital barbell thing you're trying to come up with content so every friday we do what i call form check friday so we have a Reddit community. It's just porn strength. And every Wednesday we open up a submission thread so people can post videos and uh, that they want me to form check. And then Friday, I just open it up, turn on the camera and I just rip through five or six form checks. And then we post it up on YouTube. Yeah. So, if, so yeah, if they want to get a form check for free, they can go there. Otherwise there's more information on my website and um, you can find me Twitter, Instagram, just look for horn strength. Awesome. And I'm out there trying to be out. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. Like, aren't you, but don't you, I was the other day, I, just had a wall. I was like, do I have to write another fucking tweet? Like, <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. What brilliant thing to, can I say? You should. I know. And then if, I mean, I don't know if you figured it out, but you, you're just trying to post all this brilliant stuff that you think is useful and helpful and you have no idea what's going to work. And then I posted a picture of a rotisserie chicken from Costco <laughs> and it was the most, it was the most popular thing I've ever put on Twitter. I told you and the recipe like, book is going to be the moneymaker. I was like, you guys, I just gave you like a program like how to fix your deadlift how to optimize and you care about this chicken <laughs> like what kind, I give of, up. What kind like, of seasonings on that chicken over there Paul? there was a whole debate about seed oils and, and i was like this oh is, man this is the engagement like okay you guys all right so <laughs> more rotisserie chicken posts <laughs> you know i it's a, it's a weird world out there man but god it bless is. you guys for for doing what you're doing it is, and man. uh and 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 it's very yeah it's hard especially yep. if there's so much noise. So if you there can is. cut through with good information, I think that's what we're both trying to do. Yep. Let's keep trying. All right, man. Yeah, well, I appreciate, sure. I appreciate your time. Everybody listen to this, go pick up the book, Radically Simple Strength on Amazon, follow Paul wherever you can and I appreciate your time, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right.